All right, I've been given the keys to a 1990 Porsche 964 or 911 Carrera 2. This was a car that was built during a time when Porsche was not building a lot of cars and financially wasn't doing all that great. Uh, in a lot of ways, it was overbuilt. It was the most engineered 911 up to that point that still looks like a classic air-cooled 911. Once Porsche went to the 993, the look started to change. You didn't have that classic headlight treatment over the hood and quite the same shape. What's nice about this car is that it has a 3.6 liter flat six up from 3.2 liters in the generation beforehand and it makes 247 horsepower which is a lot for back then and it's still a very quick car nowadays maybe not quick you know compared to some of the fastest porsches or cars that are on the road but it'll hold its own this car is mostly stock it's been lowered with some uh, bilstein heavy duty uh, shocks uh, but otherwise it's fairly stock uh, it has 17 inch wheels instead of the stock 16s yeah it should be a fun car to drive i've never driven a base 964 i've driven one rs america which because of the manual steering in that car is a totally different feeling this car has power steering which was a first for an air-cooled 911 um, and i'm eager to find out what it feels like to drive so join me for one mile as i drive and give my impressions of this 1990 911. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Best of all, it's free to do so. First thing that I notice when I get in the car is it's it feels like a classic air-cooled 911. Uh, not a ton has changed over the years from the dash layout, the five gauge dash, uh, the shifter location feels pretty much the same. Um, the interior shape in general feels a lot like air-cooled 911s have passed. Uh, you got two back seats back there, but I'm pretty sure that that's only for small children um, or potentially a small adult for a very, very short distance. I don't think you could fit two adults back there. Um, but without further ado, let's get this thing on the road. So before you start and try and drive off in an air-cooled 911, including the 964, is that these are floor hinge pedals. So they're, they're hinged on the ground and um, so your feet are pushing on, my, on them this way, instead of in modern cars, they're hinged from the top and, and you push down. And that makes them feel very different compared to pretty much any other car I've driven. Um, if you first get into one of these, it almost feels like the brake pedal, the way it's angled is folding over your foot and the clutch pedal is kind of the same way. Uh, but if this one is anything like past 911s I've driven, you quickly forget that and it all starts to make sense when, once you start driving. All right, so got the handbrake off. First gear is up and to the left. Now I'm gonna feel the clutch engagement here. Oh man, that is nice. So when people say that 911s are, are hard to drive, yeah, maybe when you pull away for the first time, it does feel like that, but man, the clutch pedal is so progressive in this car as is the gas pedal that this is, this is it's so easy to pull away in. Already, really good impressions. Now shifting takes a little bit getting used to. My uh, first to second shift there is a little bit, but how the clutch weight is is a little bit odd at first, but I'm sure that's something I'll get used to. Um, what do we have here? Basically, the steering is, very good. It's light. And yes, this has power steering, but the 911 being a rear engine car, steering is going to be lighter. 
than some others. So I just put it in the second gear there. Throttle blip was nice and easy. Getting on the gas. Oh, just a really solid feeling this car has. A lot like uh, a 944, which I drove earlier today for a one mile review. The difference is, is that the engine is on another level. Now I haven't given it a lot of throttle yet and I will right now, but the engine feels like a jewel compared to Porsche's four cylinders from the 944 generation. So nice, easy downshift, second gear. Oh yeah, and the brakes are really good too. Man, nothing beats the sound of a flat six and an air-cooled flat six definitely has the, a personality all its own. Um, but unlike perhaps some older 911s that are carbureted or mechanical fuel injection or CIS that's been neglected over the years, this one with 165,000 miles I'm seeing here still feels really good, really smooth. Oh yeah, that's, that's how it is. Again, you get on the brakes and it, it just feels weird at first, the way the pedal is hinged on the floor. Um, it would probably take a little bit more than a mile to really get used to these brakes. Oh, and there's a new noise. Don't know exactly what that is. Now, reverse has a detent and it's up and to the left past first gear. Oh man, I love this clutch pedal. Wow. That is how they should feel. Oh yeah, man, see, I, I already feel pretty much right at home in this car. So the way it rides, even though it's lower and it has these built-in HDs, it's a very compliant ride. Um, it's not as soft as some other Porsches, like a, a 944 of just a few years earlier, um, yet it seems to have a similar amount of compliance. Now I know the owner of this car autocrosses this sometimes and he seems like he has, has a lot of fun with it and I can already tell this is a car that I would love to autocross someday if only just to feel what it drives like when you're really pushing it, you know, and you don't have any consequences if, if you make a mistake. Uh, third gear, torque from about 3000 RPM is, is awesome. Feels like about 250 horsepower for sure. Yeah, the steering is just really good. Yeah, light yet communicative and never too heavy, that's for sure. And it feels like there's nothing on the front end, you know, which is one reason why people like 911 so much. Yeah, and the turns, it doesn't feel like there's a ton of body roll compared to some other cars from that era just feels like a very stable, a stable platform that always has your back. You know, I can tell getting on the brakes a couple times that you probably want to take care of braking in a straight line in a car like this. It doesn't feel quite as stable on the brakes, but again, on a racetrack or an autocross, stability is nice, but you also want to have the ability to make adjustments to the rear end and the front end using the brakes, the throttle, or, or anything like that. So, man, I'm already feeling like one mile just is not enough to appreciate a car like this. And I'm, I'm sure most Porsches are like that. But uh, for somebody who doesn't have a ton of time in an air-cooled 911, uh, this is one of the easiest and friendliest that I've driven. Uh, just a really solid car, and I, I can see why people love the 964, and it's really come back into its own, and, and people are appreciating, appreciating it nowadays after so many years of it being sort of the ugly stepchild, sort of like the 996 was for a while. But this video has to end at some point. You know, it's a one-mile review. We're trying to keep this a little bit short, so here we go on to our scoring categories. The first one would be car show. A 964 is not a common car. In fact, it was one of the 
Porsche just was not building a lot of cars um, around this time period in the early 90s, but and you don't see a ton around. Pretty rare car. It is a normal Carrera 2, and it's white. It's not any sort of crazy color that, you know, uh, there's no paint to sample here, but it is a classic Porsche, and I would argue that this has been a classic now for several years, especially with how the market has treated it. I'd probably ca call this, rate this as a car show car at about five and a half. Um, and that's because it's, it's a Carrera 2, it's not the most special one out there like a, a C4S or a C2S or a Turbo or a Turbo S and all those derivatives that a car like this had back then. But you just don't see them all that often anymore. And it's got that classic 911 shape. Yeah, it would do well at a car show. I don't think you would see this parked at the very front. Maybe near the front, definitely no further back than mid-pack at a car show. Uh, this will be a car that people will like walking around and checking out. Uh, daily driver. With the values that a car like this are bringing nowadays, it would be tougher to justify this as a daily drive. It is a very friendly car to drive. Probably most importantly for a daily driver is that the clutch pedal is very, very, very easy to work. Um, and I was surprised about that because I've been in some uh, 964s that, if memory serves me correctly, just were not quite as easy to get in and just drive. Clutch pedals is so nice to work with and so is the gas pedal. I don't think you'd have a lot of problems in stop and go traffic. Very compliant on the road, it's comfortable, it's not a stiff car, uh, definitely doesn't really feel like it's been lowered even though it has. And you've got a frunk where you can put things like a, a backpack or a suitcase. All told I'd probably give this a, man I don't want to go lower than a seven, the six and a half sound a little harsh. I'd probably drive a car like this to work maybe two or three days out of the week. Yeah, I'll give it a six and a half. Road tripping, I think would be a good road tripper once again. And I feel like I'm, I'm scoring these cars a little bit too high as, as we've done more one mile reviews, but it's comfortable. These seats, I could spend a lot of time in. Got enough room for a passenger who would also be comfortable in the car. And it's got some storage in the back, you know, uh, fold the seats down and some storage for the trunk for maybe a couple small suitcases and a, and a backpack and, and a couple other things. I'm gonna give this a six out of 10 for road tripping, purely because the storage isn't as good as maybe a Cayman even, with having a frunk and a trunk, for example. Um, but otherwise, this car would have scored higher. So six, because you don't have a ton of storage options, but it's super comfortable. Yeah, this would be a great road trip car if you pack light. And that is the end of our one mile review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video and others like it, please subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, please click the like button on the video and comment. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong on some of my opinions here or if you have anything to add. And I will see you next time.